I like to think that somewhere in Japan there's a Honda engineer chuckling to himself about the owners of VFR 800s who will be falling into his cunning exhaust trap. I need to get you up to speed. This VFR 800 cost £500 and has done 97,000 miles. If you haven't seen the first instalment of these videos, check, check this one out. I've got to admit that I'm playing catch up myself. A lot of things have already happened, like electrical problems, a melting clutch, overheating. Oh, and I've done the valve clearances myself. They've never been done at all, so that's gonna be pretty interesting. And a track day on it, so make sure you whack that subscribe button and the notification bell, because I'll be getting them all out as soon as I can. Now these aren't how-to guides. You might learn something from my mistakes, but I've relied heavily on this Haynes manual, and if you're working on your own bike, I really recommend you get one too. Bike Social members save 20% on them, and I've had one for pretty much every vehicle I've owned. These videos should give you an insight into what it's really like to live with a high mileage second-hand bike, so let's get into it because I want to keep these to about 10 minutes or so, not my usual massive rambles. Right, the first thing I do when I buy any used bike is to service it, whatever I'm told has been done already by the seller. Getting the main fairing panels off was pretty easy, though underneath it was really dusty, it didn't look like they'd been off for a good while. Now being a V4, the engine's fairly crammed in, and those front and rear header pipes, they made me nervous, but I gave the studs and nuts a good soaking in penetrating spray. And I used uh, Bulldog BDX if you're interested, but I didn't intend to remove them for a long time at this stage. And the bike came with an unused oil filter, so I just needed to buy some uh, oil, so I got some Castrol 10W40 um, Power One for my local Halfords, of course using my 10% discount for being a bike social member. And I should say, if you bought your bike insurance direct with Bennett's, you're already a member for free. Though anyone can join, check it out at bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join. The oil change wasn't a problem, and checking the brake pads, they were fine, though the discs are a bit worn. And I actually, I replaced the uh, pads on the, on the rear. There were a set of pads with it, so they obviously intended to be changed. Getting the rear wheel off is just a matter of removing the uh, wheel bolts, but you have to loosen and rotate the exhaust out of the way too. Now, the end of this one is rotting, so I have to take it off altogether. It, it, it seems a bit of a design flaw to me. Uh, I mean, especially compared to the my BMW GS, where you can just take the wheel off. But that as a design flaw is nothing on what I found later. So, after checking the rest of the bike over, it was, it was running fine, and I was happy with it, but the suspension felt really knackered. Now, check out this video uh, to see the forks being completely stripped, cleaned, and rebuilt by K-Tech. Honestly, on any bike, it's well worth doing, and it's not too expensive. Now, KTEC also removes the shim stack entirely, something you can't really do yourself without a lathe and a lot of knowledge. So it's definitely something I do on my bikes. I have done on my bikes, and I, I don't, can't do it myself. Anyway, the front was sorted, but the shock isn't rebuildable like the one on my 1999 ZX6R, so it'd have to be a new one. Now, of course, you could go all out for a high-performance one from KTEC, Maxton, Olin's, but this is a 500-pound bike, and I'm not a racer. At the more budget end, there's YSS, for instance, but I've used Hagon before and been really impressed. If you didn't know, Hagon is a British brand that makes its suspension kit in its own factory in Essex. When you order with them, they check your weight, whether you carry a pillion and luggage and what your riding style is, and that way they can supply the correct spring and have it all set up and ready to go. A standard monoshock from Hagon is £340, which is very good when you consider that the Honda original shock for the 2002 model, I couldn't find a 2001 OE shock for sale, is £1,002.90. As I'd be doing quite a few different things with the bike, from commuting to two-up touring and track days, and because the shock's hard to get at, I also got the remote hydraulic preload adjuster, which costs £160. So yes, the rear suspension costs a total of £500, which is what the bike costs. But I did know this would be something that needed doing. You know, you have to take into consideration buying anything, what it's going to cost you down the line. And the bike did pass its MOT with the original shock, so it could have been left. But it felt crashy and well past its best. If this had just been a winter hack that wasn't going to go out of town, I'd, I'd perhaps have left it to be honest, but I want to be able to enjoy this bike everywhere. And yes, it really did work. Honestly, the VFR often surprises me now with just how well it handles. 
I'll tell you more about it on track in one of the videos coming up, but coming out of roundabouts or hacking about on country roads, it's hard to believe this bike's done nearly 100,000 miles. So when I serviced it, I checked all the bearings and they're all good, so that definitely helps. But now I've had the forks rebuilt by KTEC and I've fitted this Hagon shock, it's absolutely fantastic. Look, if your bike's feeling tired and making you wanna look at something else, do consider sorting suspension out. It's a moving part, just like the inside of the engine, so it needs cleaning and it needs new oil. The forks can be serviced, but not always a shock, so spending on something like a Hagon can make it feel like a whole new bike, and then you'll have a shock that can be serviced many years down the line. How lovely, a bit of money and the bike's sorted, but what an absolute bastard of a job it was to get that shock in. Oh, hello. Did you know that Bennett's, one of the UK's leading bike insurers, now covers cars too? Doesn't matter whether it's a sports car, classic car, normal car, or you're a new or experienced driver. If you're a Bennett's customer already for your bike insurance, you'll get a discount on your policy. And if you're a bike social member, you'll get 30 quid cash back. Anybody can go for a quote though, so check it out. It's not Hagon's fault. Everything's the right size and length. And I've done jobs like this before with no problems. But if you're watching this in Japan, Mr. Honda engineer, please tell me why you designed the bolt that holds the exhaust collector box in place. Designed it to be hidden behind the exhaust collector box that needs to come off. And why did you put it directly in the line of fire of all the road salt and crap that then gets extra fruity with the heat from the bloody collector box? Turns out you can't get the final suspension linkage bolt out without removing the collector box and front header pipes. Now that seems a pretty basic design choice to me and it meant I had to remove the front manifold nuts. Now these haven't been off in 21 years and nearly four times around the world. So yeah, I soaked the hell out of them with penetrating spray over several nights, then took it really easy removing them. I consider it lucky that only one stud sheared off, but replacing the stud had to wait until the pipes were off and they're hung from the bottom of the engine with that fiendishly positioned bolt. Now the rear head's manifold pipes are connected to the collector and front section behind the foot peg, but they were seized on. Now one of the pipe clamps I managed to undo by gently bouncing the bolt back and forth with my ratchet, but the other was locked solid and I had to cut that off with a, with a pad saw. Then it was the collector box. And the nut that you're meant to get to through a narrow gap between the pipes looked like a sea relic. It was just a cone of brown, nothing would bite onto it, and I couldn't drill it from that side, so I ended up having to drill it from the left, which was bad enough as I couldn't put the bike on the center stand after I'd taken it off the Abbas guy left, as like both of those blocked access to the bolt. So I had it on the side stand, making it even harder to get at while I was laying on the garage floor. Oh, and with the uh, swing arm linkage partially removed, the bike just wanted to squat and fall over. So I had a lump of wood wedged under, uh, like wedged above the wheel to keep it upright, which was sketchy. It was a proper pain in the ass to drill the, drill the bolt head out, but after I'd done it, I'd missed a sliver that got wedged as I hammered it through. Proper wedged. I tried a multi-tool down there to cut the bolt, but that didn't work. In the end, it was mole grips one end and smacking it with a hammer the other, and it eventually came out. Then it turned out that the connections to the uh, rear manifold pipes were seized together. So I soaked them in penetrating spray, then ended up trying to get heat through them to free them. And smacking them with a lump of wood and a mallet eventually got them off. And at that point, I was utterly sick of this. The good news is that the broken exhaust stud came out okay. I'd been soaking it in penetrating fluid at every night for several nights, then I warmed the area gently with a blowtorch before using mole grips as tight as I could get them. And they had decent sharp teeth too, which definitely helped. Putting the new stud in was a bit nerve wracking to be honest, as it didn't want to spin in easily, so I was really worried about damaging the head. And after all that, the new Hagon shock went in fine with, it just needed a little help from my wife holding the swing arm up as I got the linkage reconnected. You okay? Yeah. Don't strain yourself. It shouldn't be too heavy. Right, up a bit more. Up, up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Down a bit. Down. Whoa. That's it. Done. Oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you. It's just that I couldn't do it all together. That's got the shock link. New shock in. <laughs> and the link plate had some deep grooves in it, but nothing was fouling. So I think a stone had got wedged in there at some point. If it had been much deeper, I'd probably have had to have replaced the plate, but this cleaned up and it, it was fine. Looks more than safe enough. 
And the Hagon remote preload adjuster does come with its own mounting plate, but it didn't work anywhere on the VFR that I could find. So I made a new one out of a sheet of steel, bending it into the right shape. And once that was sorted, I cleaned it up, painted it with Halford's wheel silver, then lacquered it. And the only issue I had with the shock was that the hydraulic hose were pointing down on the shock body. I gently tweaked the banjo bolt round a crack and it got it spot on, so the hose won't kink or foul anywhere as, as the swing arm moves. And that's it sorted. Oh no, it's not. Because the exhaust was a bastard to put back on too. Now of course I had to buy new gaskets for the connector pipes and I had to get those off eBay in the end, but they wouldn't fit, so I had to trim them down. And I kept distorting as I tried to get the bloody pipes in, and it was only uh, some copper grease that just about kept the new front manifold gaskets from falling out more than half a dozen times while I faffed about with the back, trying to get the bloody things lined up. And yes, that collector box securing bolt is a ball ache to get back into, especially when you have to replace the little rubber bit in the middle. And the best bit, the little rubber bit is £34.39. And with the packing protector, collar, nut and bolt, that's over 50 quid just for that one collector box fastener, as I could only get it as an original part, not a pattern from Wimoto like I do with most other bits. Anyway, it's back together now. And as I said, the, the Hagon shock and KTEC suspension has made the old VFR handle like it's new. Don't let this video put you off owning a high miles bike. I've got several more videos coming up that will do that. No, seriously, don't be put off. But you do need to be aware that any high mileage vehicle might have some issues. The thing is, I've owned plenty of bikes that I needed to do work on, but none have been as awkward as this VFR. The V4 motor sounds great. Well, it did before it started sounding like a, like a bit blowy since I had to hammer the pipes back together with buggered up gaskets. Still, it handles brilliantly now. If you've got the time and the tools, working on bikes is usually great fun. I loved rebuilding my ZX6R and with companies like Wemoto offering incredible value aftermarket spares, it can usually be fairly affordable. <laughs>